as we start to think about the ways that the government can influence the state of the economy, we're going to have to define some of the tools available. First, we will discuss what money is. After all, every purchase requires some sort of payment. Therefore, one way to control the amount of spending is through reducing or increasing the amount of money in the economy. Think about your transactions in the past week. How many things did you purchase? How did you pay for those purchases? For the most of us, it probably wasn't through cash. So, so the term money includes more than cash. In this series of videos, we will define what we mean by money, how we measure it, and the role of banks in controlling the money supply. Finally, we will discuss the Federal Reserve System in the United States, or what the rest of the world calls the central bank. So what is money? Most people think of currency when we talk about money, but the definition of money is actually broader. Anything that is used as a form of payment and exchange of goods and services is considered money. For something to be considered money, it must meet three main functions. The first function is it must serve as a medium of exchange. By medium of exchange, we mean that it can be traded for goods and services. While currency is a common medium of exchange, there are actually other ways to exchange goods. In some markets, uh, other goods are traded um, or bartered for other goods. We call that a barter economy. While this exists, it creates some issues. Uh, barter requires what we call a double coincidence of wants, which means each party involved in the trade must want what the other party is willing to trade. This creates a friction in the economy because it requires us to find one person that's willing to exchange a good or service for the good or service that we have. An improvement over a barter economy is commodity money. And this is how our trajectory of history has gone with respect to money. In this situation, buyers and sellers agree to use a specific good as money. Examples of this is tobacco, gold, or silver, historically. Commodity-backed money is, for instance, the US dollar was historically backed by gold. It no longer is and hasn't been for a while. Today, though, the US dollar is considered fiat money. It has no value beyond the fact that it is a medium of exchange. It is not tied to gold or any other commodity. The second function money must serve is it needs to be a unit of account. A unit of account means that it is what prices are quoted in. In the US, we have decided that the unit of account will be the dollar. In Oman, the unit of account is the Omani Rial. If you have ever traveled through large international airports and visited duty-free, you will notice that they report prices in several different currencies. Finally, money needs to be a store of value. That means it needs to keep its value and hold wealth. Obviously, inflation is going to erode the value of the dollar from time to time, but the dollar does not lose value in any other way. We know from history that when currencies start to lose this function, people start to look for other ways to store their wealth. So now we know what the function of money should be. Let us start to shift to how we measure how much money is actually in the economy. Economists define money in several ways. One way of definition is in broad categories called the M1 and M2. M1 is made up of what we call liquid forms of money. It includes currency and checkable deposits. Liquid here means how easy is the money to use. The easier the money is to use, the more liquid it is. M2 includes all of what is included in M1, plus other less liquid deposits like money market accounts, mutual funds, certificate of deposits, also known as CDs. But these are forms of currency uh, but we don't use them to purchase goods and services. It requires some effort to liquidate that to turn it into money. So we measure the amount of money in the economy by calculating M2. There are other categories that we could look at, but M2 is the most used. It turns out that the amount of money in circulation can impact our spending habits. 
Therefore, economists often keep track of the amount of money in circulation. The Federal Reserve and banks can adjust the amount of money. Next, we will discuss how banks operate and how they create money. See you in the next video.